We welcome you back to CBS Mornings. We continue our special series. We call it Crime Without Punishment, looking at the disturbing rise in unsolved murder cases in this country. We've shown why some big city police departments cannot keep pace with the rising number of killings and how it has made the families of the murder victims very frustrated and very angry. This morning, we look at a potential solution, a federal, state, and local partnership that could be, we say, could be a model for other cities. Chief investigative correspondent, that's Jim Axelrod, went to Baltimore to learn exactly how it works. They have some history in doing this kind of thing. They do. Good morning. Good morning to you. Good morning. What we kept hearing from police chief after police chief, detective after detective, in our collaborative investigation done by CBS News and local CBS stations around the country were descriptions of a crippling shortage of manpower and resources. In Baltimore, we found an approach that seems to be gaining some traction in addressing these shortages and solving more murders. Teamwork. His killer was standing on that end. So far this week, we've documented a troubling trend. For people getting away with murder? The rate of making arrests in murder cases is at a 50-year low. Baltimore police are pleading for help as they work to solve 16 shootings and 28 armed robberies. Baltimore is no different, where police solve less than half of the homicides. Sure, except here. Room. Plenty of room, big space. They Open just might be finding a solution kind of to this disturbing problem. There it is. It's an approach overseen by Eric Barron, the U.S. attorney in Maryland. Barron hopes to boost the rate of homicide arrests with more intelligence developed from a partnership housed in a nondescript warehouse in a secured location we've been asked to conceal. This is uh, the Organized Crime Drug Enforcement Task Force. Morning, you had a couple uh, search warrants you did. A strike force of local and federal authorities taking aim at Baltimore's violent crime. The law enforcement community is so balkanized. You got local, state, federal. Here is where we can put all or most of them together in one place, sharing information, working together. 16 people, you heard that right, shot over the weekend alone. We visited after a violent Father's Day weekend added six new homicides to the city's total. So this is a map that we generated of all the homicides and shootings in 2021 in Baltimore City. Intelligence analyst Billy Nichols is the dot connector in chief here. At least 338 homicides in red last year alone. They are in every part every portion of, of the city. city. Each morning, Nichols opens an email with what's called a 24, a fresh report of each homicide, shooting, and questionable death in the city in the last 24 hours. The first thing I'm looking for is really to see whether or not our victim has anything to do with any of our cases. Because, you know, if, if that's the case, then it seems the logical thought would be it has something to do with the ongoing investigation. Nichols worked the streets for more than 20 years as a Baltimore police officer. So you might get something in a 24 that connects up to another homicide investigation. Or another federal, you know, federal investigation. Triple C was as organized and savvy as they are violent and relentless. The idea is to build big cases that take lots of murderers off the street at once, like the 15 Triple C gang members linked to 18 homicides and 27 other attempts. They were indicted last summer on drug, racketeering, and conspiracy charges. This business was built on violence, murders and shootings of rival gang members and drug dealers. John Lenzner was the acting U.S. attorney in Baltimore at the time. A one indictment can not only lead to violent gang members serving in prison, but can also help a city clear a number of homicides that have gone unsolved for a number of years. Eric Barron, the current U.S. attorney, calls it the Al Capone strategy. The violent mob boss wasn't busted for murder in the 1930s. He was convicted on tax evasion charges. The problem is a 50-year low in clearing murder cases. The solution, if I hear you right, is cooperation. Absolutely. It's the biggest part of the solution. Cooperation, not just among law enforcement, but the community as well. It all boils down to teamwork, it seems. Yeah, you know, and, and after demonstrating the extent of this problem for a couple days, 
it's refreshing to hear somebody talking about solutions. Uh, Why no. do they want to keep the location a secret? I right. think that... there is such pressure, first of all, to find something. Uh, the Department of Justice overseeing this, uh, always cautious by nature, yeah. wants to make sure nothing gets in the way by way of uh, contamination mm -hmm. or compromise. And, and there has been some issues in years past with the BPD, right? It was some corruption that that was a big story nationwide. Yeah. And that speaks yeah. to what we found in all cities. Yeah, which for sure. is yeah. it that compromises the relationship between police and community and without that cooperation you have an issue. Mm. So to restore the trust that's been eroded, everyone we talked through the entire investigation says that is the key. Community police restoration of trust is the answer. To, to reducing this disturbing trend. Your stories yesterday were so heartbreaking this week, you know, where mothers are asked to solve their own crimes. It's nice to see that there is some solution that could possibly right, work. Right, Yeah. Also nice to see us doing this kind of a project. Exactly. Yeah, working with our stations across the country. Exactly right. Yeah. Broad well reach. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Jim, thank you. Nice to sit with you. Great to be here. <laughs> Good to see you. All right.